Again, sorry, good morning and greetings from the Philippines. The title of my presentation is Proximity, Suitability, or Social Relations, Pottery Making and Raw Material Procurement in Bohol, Central Visayas, Philippines. This study focuses on the raw materials that the Boholano potters are using in their ceramic production. But first, I will present how potters of Bohol produce and distribute their pottery. Then I will discuss how and where the potters are procuring their raw materials. Next, please. The availability of raw materials is essential in the development of pottery making in a community. For ceramic production, the materials needed are clay, temper, fuel, water, slip, paint, and glaze. However, in traditional craft production, slip and glaze are sometimes optional or not completely used, just like in Bohol. Next, please. Bohol is the 10th largest island in the Philippines that is located in the Central Visayas region. From 2017 to 2018, when I conducted this research, there are still four villages in Bohol that make traditional pottery. These are the villages of Bagaca in Talibon, Binogawan in Calape, Kanduwa Occidental in Valencia, and East Poblacion in Albuquerque. Next, please. The first village that I visited is Bagaca in Talibon. In this community, 12 households still make traditional pottery. There are 23 potters in this village, 10 males and 13 females. Next, please. The second community that I visited is Binogawan, Calape. Here, there are still 12 households that manufactured indigenous pottery. There are a total of 25 active potters in this village where seven are males and 18 are females. Next, please. The third community that I visited is Kanduao Occidental, Valencia. This place has the most number of households and potters in Bohol that still makes traditional pottery. With 37 households and 66 active potters, there are 29 males and 37 active potters in this village. And next, the last pottery that I uh, that I visit, pottery village that I visited, is East Poblacion in Albuquerque. In this community, the pottery tradition is in peril because there are only five households that make local pottery. There are six active potters in this village, where five are males and one remaining male potters. Next, please. This study utilized ethnoarchaeology as a research strategy. Ethnoarchaeology is the ethnographic study of living cultures from archaeological perspective. It means studying the present to understand the past. Specifically, I employed the following research methods. Next, please. I observe and join the potters in their activities from procuring their raw materials, making pots, up to selling their pottery in the market. Next, please. I also conducted survey and interviews using a modified version of Owen Rice Pottery Technology data sheet and checklist using the local language and dialect of the potters. Next, please. With proper consent from the potters, I took thousands of photographs and recorded hours of videos, especially in documenting the Shan Operatoire of pottery making in each of the pottery villages. Next, please. I also hired potters from each village to demonstrate to us how they make pots from start to finish. Next, please, we also collected clay, temper, paint, and pottery samples from all the pottery villages. These materials will be analyzed later on using thin section petrography and portable X-ray fluorescence. Next, please, the identifications of minerals, rock fragments, and organic material in tempers was done through thin section petrography. Next, please. In all of these villages in Bohol, ceramics are handmade, where potters use only mats, wood blocks, or banana leaves for rotational devices and pot holders, small butters for burnishing, fishnets and dried banana leaves for polishing, and wooden paddles, bamboo stick, and stone anvils for shaping. Next, please. Clay and temper are mixed manually using their hands, but sometimes even their feet. No machines are made. Also, they do not use a potter's wheel nor molds in manufacturing their pottery. Next, please. The pots are all open-fired in a vacant space in their backyard or their village. They do not use a kiln. Firing is a family or a group activity where everyone helps, including the children. Firing platforms are being shared by potters. This is an open firing in Talibon Bohol. Next, please. This one, the next one is the open firing in Calape Bohol. Next, please. 
this is still um in uh this is still in Calape Bohol where fuel such as coconut leaves and rice hay is being added to the firing platform. Next please. This is the open firing in Kanduao Occidental in Valencia Bohol. And then next please and finally this is the firing technique in East Poblacion Albuquerque where they use banana trunks as the base for the firing platform. Next please. This is how the firing platform looks like in Albuquerque, Bohol. Next, please. The following are the common types of ceramic vessels being made in Bohol. These are all being made in all the pottery communities uh, on the island, except for one which I will identify later on. We have cooking pots, clay stoves, and water jars. Next, please. They also make, um, in clockwise, flower pots, clay pitchers, and salt-making pots. Now, salt-making pots are only made in Albuquerque because the village has its own traditional salt-making industry. And then we also have decorative jars. Next, please. They also make in clockwise clay oil lamps, clay pipes for smoking, clay steamers, children's toys such as miniature kitchen utensils and coin banks, and, and rice cake pots. Next, please. Ceramic distribution. Um, in Bohol is now guided by market economy. However, they still have some unique distribution systems or mechanisms. A lot of potters of Bohol sell their products during market days in their towns and nearby villages and towns. They normally display their products in one corner of the market, a church, or any available, uh, any available space visible to passers-by. Next, please. In Suroy Suroy or itinerant vending, a group of potters goes around villages and towns to sell their pots. In these photos, potters of Valencia Bohol are carrying clay stoves on their backs using a long bamboo walking around a village. Next, please. The most uh, interesting distribution system in Bohol is bailo or bailoan or barter. I was very fortunate when, that when I was conducting this study in Valencia, two potters were about to conduct barter trips to nearby towns. They will be exchanging their clay pots, mainly clay stoves, for anhas rice. Next, please. For Valencia potters, one clay stove is exchanged for five ganta of anhas rice, which is around 10 kilos. One clay stove is also exchanged for six kilos of corn. One water jar is bartered for one sack or 50 kilos of anhas rice. Next, please. Manang Perla of Talibon before the pandemic used to exchange her pots for fresh and dried fish, shellfish, and other marine resources from the people of the nearby islands of Talibon. Next, please. Now we proceed to the, to the raw material procurement in Bohol. Next, please. Potters have different ways of obtaining and mining their clay in Bohol. Access to the land where clay is mined is free of charge or they need to pay a small amount to the landowner. Next, please. The Taliban potters use local clay or yuta mainly from their backyards or in lands that they own. It is not unusual to see holes being dug around their houses. The joke among potters is that they, you're not supposed to go home drunk at night because you might fell in one of these pit holes. Next, please. The Calape potters use local clay, mainly from a hilly coconut plantation located in the village. The land is owned by a local villager. Access to the clay is not free. The potters pay 200 pesos per month or roughly 4 US dollars to the landowner if they are regularly mining clay in the site. If not, they pay 20 pesos per sack. Next, next please. All Valencia potters, uh, use local clay solely from the land of Kaidlong. It is located at the bottom of a hill and near a small creek where the villager washed their clothes. It is free of charge to mine clay in this area. However, the potters must seek permission from the landowner first. Next, please. The remaining Albuquerque potters use local clay mainly from the backyard of Manang Nanay, who is one of the remaining potters of the village. Mining the clay is free of charge or is being exchanged for the temper sand that is mined in the backyard of another pottery in the village. Next, please. Boholano potters have different ways of obtaining and mining their temper. 
access to temper in all of the pottery communities is free or is free of charge. Next, please. Temper for Talibon pottery is mined in their own backyards or own land. What is unique in this village is that the clay and temper are mined in the same place or location. Next, please. The stratigraphy in Talibon is topsoil on the surface, then clay layer below it afterward. The clay, the temper layer underneath it, then the bedrock at the bottom. Next, please. The Talibon potters call their temper bas or anapog. Bas means sand, and anapog means limestone. So no wonder when I look at the temper using a petrographic microscope, it is mainly calcite from weathered limestone. Next, please. The temper used by the Kalape potters is river sand gathered from Labuon River. The river is located in the next village, which is one to two kilometers away from Binogawan. Next, there is a stream that is running in the middle of the pottery village. I was told that the potters tried using the sand from it as a tempering material. However, the pots made using the sand of the stream break easily. This is the reason why the potters prefer the sand from the river that is much farther away. Next, please. The Kalape potters call their temper bass or sand in their local language. Geologically, the sand temper is mainly calcite with biotite, quartz, olivine, and horn blend. Next, please. The temper used by Valencia potters is blackish brown beach sand found near the current beach of the village. Access to it is free. Next, the Valencia call their temper bass or bunbunon, which both mean sand. The sand temper is mainly calcite with biotite, quartz, olivine, and horn blend. Next, please. The temper used by the Albuquerque potters is the sand found locally in the village. The sand temper source is located in the backyard of Manang Len, who is one of the remaining potters of the village. Next, please. The Albuquerque potters call their temper bonbon or sand and silica, which refers to the quartz content of the temper. Next, please. Potters have different ways of fighting their potteries. However, Boholano potters normally use fuel that is readily available in their locality. Next, please. The potters of Talibon, Calape, and Valencia are using coconut leaves and stems, coconut nuts, various types of wood, and rice hay in fighting their pottery. Next, please. In Albuquerque, they also use coconut leaves, stem and nuts, and wood as fuel. However, there are not many rice fields in the area. That is why the potters do not use rice hay in firing their pots. Instead, they use, they're using buli, a kind of palm tree that thrives in the village. Next, please. Next, please. Kalape is the only pottery community in Bohol that decorate their pots by painting something in them. You can see it on the third picture from, from, from left. The potters decorate their pots with simple lines, dots, and geometric figures. They use limestone that is mined on top of the mountain above the village. The stone is pulverized and then mixed with water. The mixture is applied using a stick or their fingers. What is interesting is that every cooking pot maker in the village has a unique design that they paint on their pots. The design serves as the identity of the cooking pot makers. I tested this notion. I showed some cooking pots to other potters and asked them to tell me who made uh, the pots. They easily identify the cooking pot maker by simply looking at the design. Next, please. Concluding remarks, in Bohol, suitability is the main concern of the potters in procuring their raw materials when access to them is unrestricted. What they will use must be the right one. For example, even if there is sand available in the village of Binugawan Kalape, the potters still mine the sand from the river in the next village that is farther away because the pots that they make using it do not break easily. Next, please. When access to the raw materials is restricted, social relation plays an essential role in raw material acquisition in Bohol. The potters must have a good relationship with the owners of the lands where they mine their, where they mine their clay and temper, such as the case of Calape, Valencia, and Albuquerque. They need special favors from owners of coconut plantations for the fuel. 
they normally give pots as gift to rice field owners where they get their rice hay. Next, please. The distance to resources and availability also play uh, a vital role in the crop production in Bohol since all the raw materials such as clay, temper, paint, and fuel are readily available within a five kilometer radius. In Albuquerque, since there are not many rice fields, they do not use rice hay for firing their wares. Instead, they use a variety of palm tree that grows abundantly in the village. And last slide, please. It seems like suitability, social relations, distance, and availability all play significant, significant role in raw material procurement in Bohol. Access to the raw materials, whether free or restricted, will determine which of these four factors will be the main concern of the Boholano potters in acquiring clay, temper, paint, and fuel. And finally, I would like to thank the University of the Philippines for funding this project. I'm also grateful to the Boholano Potters for their candidness, generosity, and candidness. And thank you for your time. Maraming salamat po.